Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning has been on children and reading. While people of color are still underrepresented in books for kids and teens, my next guest has been busy writing books featuring people of color that promote self-confidence, diversity, and pride. Deanna Singh is recognized as a leading authority in building innovative opportunities within underserved communities. She's a gifted communicator, an entrepreneurial businesswoman, and author of the children's book, I am a boy of color and I am a girl of color. How are you, Deanna? I am wonderful. Thank you for having me back on the show. Oh, I'm glad to have you back. And like I said, you've been here on several occasions to promote uh, both of your children's books. And so when I found out you were working on another <laughs> one, I was like, we got to find out more about it. Fill us in. Sure. Well, I'm so happy to be able to share that I am working on another book and it's set to be released this fall. So awesome. you've heard it first here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the book will be coming out uh, in the fall, and it's called Cloth Crown. Mm, I love that. And so what's the concept behind Cloth Crown? Sure. So I am actually a biracial woman. So mm -hmm. I'm African American, and my father is Sikh, and, uh, Sikh Indian, Sikh mm -hmm. American. And in my Sikh side of my, of my culture, one of the things that men do is they do not cut their hair and women do not cut their hair. And so the men end up wearing turbans. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times younger boys will wear a thing called a parka and they have it on their head. It's like they, they roll their hair up into, braid it and put it into a bun and, mm -hmm. and put it at the top of their hair and they cover it. And so this book is really about a little boy who's wearing a parka and he's being teased at school. Mm. He's being bullied at school because other children don't understand why he's wearing it. And yeah. so he comes home and tells his family that he wants to cut his hair. And the book goes through this storyline of really the father and, and the little boy having a conversation about the importance of the butka, why they wear the butka, what, what it means to wear a turban. Wow. And the little boy is called to make a decision on his own. And so it really walks you through that, that storyline. I love that. And so uh, this is just a Another way for you to help young people embrace their heritage, their culture, and then also help other young people who may not quite understand it, but really after reading the book, uh, they don't have to question it, they don't have to tease, they understand that it's a part of uh, who they are. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot of learning that needs to happen on oh, yeah. all sides of this story, right? Yeah. There is some encouragement for the young men who are going through this discerning process mm -hmm. and trying to decide what they're going to do. There's an opportunity to learn about in a totally different culture. Yeah. You know, there's an opportunity for teachers to figure out how they can introduce different concepts. And so everybody has something, right, yeah. that distinguishes them. Yeah. Sometimes it's as visible as a turban on your head, and sometimes it's not very visible. Yeah. And so so that's a that's a common experience that we all have to go through and unfortunately we have a lot of bullying going on too mm -hmm. and so hopefully this will add to that dialogue and that discussion about how we as as adults can support our young people and how young people can support one another yeah and you know there are some adults who need to have yes. a better understanding <laughs> as well so I think it's awesome and really when you think about you know different cultures and religions covering their hair with head scarves turbans or even a hijab, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. uh, it really allows young people to be proud of who they are. And Absolutely. that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Yeah. So you're going to be featured at an event coming up on September 1st. It's presented by the Black Child Development Institute called Brunch of Books. It's for children and their parents. And you're the keynote speaker. So when you have an opportunity to speak to uh, groups, whether it be as a keynote or teachers or whatever the case, what is important for you to relay over? So first of all, I'm just so excited about this <laughs> idea. I mean, similar to what Carved in Stone is doing and what mm -hmm. COA is doing, I love of it when community organizations and when community leaders pull together to emphasize this idea of changing the narrative. Yeah. Right. Adding more, to, adding more opportunities to what we're reading, what we're looking at, what our children are having the opportunity to experience. Yeah. So first, I just want to say I am <laughs> super excited. <laughs> right. So one thing I always want to convey to any audience I get a chance to speak to is just the the joy that comes with being part of their um, their their initiatives, right? Mm -hmm. And them trying to really get that message across. So that's 
a number one thing. But mm -hmm. the second objective that I really have in those conversations is really helping people see some of the tangible things that they can do right away, right? Mm -hmm. right, even before they go to sleep at night. What are some things that people in the audience can think about that they can do in their daily practice to help us change this narrative? When it's, I'm talking to teachers, I talk to them about what's on your bookshelf? Mm -hmm. What do your students experience? Are all of your children represented there? Are there children who are not in your classroom, but who are still represented in your mm. bookshelf? Right? So that's a really big question for teachers. For parents, it's we have the opportunity to do these story times with our children. Are we reading stories? Are we asking them questions? Are we giving them the opportunity to ask us questions? Yeah. Are we using these books as a tool? to help them frame their own narrative so children can frame their own narrative and their own inner voice, mm -hmm. but also so that they can see the beauty in the people that they interact with. And so really, and then my favorite audience is with young people, right? <laughs> so the opportunity to actually have the chance to talk to other children, I love that because that's the moment where someone can really make that connection mm -hmm. and build that you know, as part of their own self-image. And so whenever I talk to young people, we always start off with this exercise where we talk about how important it is to have a really positive self-image mm -hmm. and how we all have the superpower to be able to go and make somebody else smile, to yeah. go and see the beauty in somebody else. So those are my primary three I audiences, but um, I always, no matter what, am talking about how changing the narrative is all of our responsibility. It really is. And so if someone's interested in going to the brunch of books, uh, where Deanna is going to be the keynote speaker, you can go to the website at bcdi-milwaukee.org. And uh, you said something key, you know, and just what can we do in the moment to help make a difference and change the narrative? And the young lady uh, who was in the last segment, Naisha, uh, that's exactly what she did. Absolutely. In the moment, she said, what can I do? She was inspired by someone right. else who was doing that. And then what's even more special is you sent her some of your books I that sure you've did. written. <laughs> and I it's sure just, did. it's really a collective of individuals coming together with the concept of It Takes a Village. Right. Yeah. I mean, that is something that's been primary in all of our books and the mm -hmm. things that we focused on. So you may remember that what we do is we take profits from the books that we sell in our children's book series, and we actually put them into a foundation. And my uh -huh. children, who have grown up with these books but are now <laughs> 7 and 10 years old, wow. they run that foundation. And so what they do is they take the money that we you know, are able to, to, to accumulate through selling, mm -hmm. selling the children's books, and then they redistribute those funds to other organizations around the city. So this week alone, they made two contributions to two other similar organizations wow. that are doing this kind of work and really focused on positive images of children of color. So, Ooh. and I should just say that I'm doing the keynote, but the boys are going to be there with me. Uh -huh. that, that's another plug for that amazing <laughs> event that is coming up. <laughs> yes, and your son has been on the show he with has you been before. On the show Do before. such a great job in just getting them out there and getting them used to being before people and talking in public and he acts, all kind of stuff. <laughs> the both of but them are the thing, amazing. Right, that's the opportunity that we have as adults. Mm -hmm. When we're able to shift our power and we give it to young people, mm -hmm. I mean, you saw what Naisha is doing, right? <laughs> yes. It's amazing. It will, it will always blow your mind because they have so much creativity and so much talent. And sometimes we're the ones who are in the way. And mm -hmm. so the foundation is actually a constant reminder to me as a parent, as an advocate, right, that if children have power and if they have a voice, there's no limit to That's what the they truth. can do. That's the truth. And one of the things anyone needs in order to make a difference and make things happen is drive. Mm -hmm. And you are one of those people, for sure. <laughs> I look at your list of things that you're currently doing, and I'm like, I don't know how she does it, but you do it. And so since we're talking about reading, you also have a book that you've put out there for adults mm -hmm. called Purposeful Hustle. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So Purposeful Hustle really goes at that point that you just said, right? <laughs> it's this idea of how do we define our purpose mm -hmm. as individuals? What does that mean? How do we um, understand what we are uniquely positioned to do here in the world? And then the hustle part is, how do you do it, right? <laughs> how, it do you, happen, how do you yes. make it happen? And so I had the great honor of being able to write that book. Um, it's been astounding to me the way that it's been received. Mm -hmm. We've broken every record we could have possibly wow. have put out 
um, about the book. And I think the thing that has made it so successful is the fact that so many people resonate with this idea mm -hmm. of wanting to make a difference in the world. And the question is, how do you go about doing it? And how do you get past some of the obstacles that are going to be in your way, right? And so I share all my mistakes, <laughs> not all of them, because <laughs> you'd have like a huge, you know, gigantic more book here. Um, but I share the ones that I think will help people understand how to get through some of the challenges okay. when you want to live in your purpose. How do you get over, you know, being afraid? How, how do you get over not feeling like you can take the initiative, right? And so we work through a, a lot of different things in there. That's amazing. So, of course, uh, people can go to your website to uh, get information on how to get your books that you've already written, but also the one that's going to be coming out, Cloth Crown for Children. There is a pre-sale going on as we speak, right? That's right. If you want to be one of the first people to get the book, <laughs> uh, you can go to Deanna Singh com and there is a store there and all of the all of the information is all listed there so one of the things that you point out in purposeful hustle is the importance of putting intentional thought into action and that's what I love most about you because you do that on so many different levels uh, August 5th marked the seventh anniversary of the tragic mass shooting at the Sikh temple in Oak Creek that claimed the lives of six people and so you found a way to uh, bring a message to the stage uh, by executive producing a production called Raghead. Tell us about that. Sure. So the the tragedy hit my family very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, we had you know a number of people that we loved dearly who were impacted by what happened yeah. on that day. And so there was a lot of pain there. And one of the things that I think you have to do if you're a purposeful hustler is you have to take even those moments of pain and figure out how you can figure them into opportunities for good. Mm. And so when I found out about Raghead and I saw that I flew out to LA to see the production uh -huh. was completely blown away. I knew that we needed to bring it to Milwaukee. And so it was a great honor to be able to bring the uh, show here. I'm so grateful to Milwaukee. We sold out all three performances. Wow. And we had people walking away and everyone who came really requesting that we come back again because the show is just so powerful. It's written by a woman named Sandeep Morrison and she depicts a number of characters. So she, it's a one woman show. Mm -hmm. But she wouldn't know it because every time she comes out with a new person, you think it's a different person coming <laughs> That's out. That's talent. It's a lot of incredible <laughs> amount of talent. Um, but what she does is she tells this story from multiple different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And I think it gives you a very holistic look. And what I would say that I heard from people leaving, what it meant for me, is that it was an opportunity to do some healing, but also an opportunity to really push our ability for understanding. Yeah, I appreciate that so much. And so uh, you have a blog, a blog, vlog, all these things. <laughs> like I said, I don't know where you find the time, but you use that to motivate and to uh, really just uh, put out information that can help people think in different ways. Yes, I, you know what, I have the great honor, again, of being <laughs> able to travel all over the country and talk to people who are trying to live in, with purpose, mm -hmm. right? Who are trying to be intentional, who, who want to see the world left better than what they came into it, mm -hmm. right? And so in that space, I have a lot of opportunities to talk to people and they ask me great questions. And so the vlog really is an opportunity because now time is limited, right? <laughs> I have not figured out how to make more time. Uh -huh. Can you figure that out? Please let me know. <laughs> I can't uh, figure it out. <laughs> but since I can't figure that out, right, this is an opportunity and a way to answer some of the questions that I hear most frequently. So I try to make it really relevant to questions or things that I'm hearing, especially while I'm on the road. And we like to have fun. Yeah. Right, so we, we definitely want to make well, sure that I it's get a fun those experience. Blogs across my email. I appreciate what you do. So, can people sign up for those on your website? They can. So, if okay. you just go to DeannaSing.com, there's a sign up right there on the front page, and we'd love for you to do that because the more we can hear from people about what's working, what they have questions about, the more we can actually like good, you know, content we can put out there in the world. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming by of today. Of course, thank you Continued for everything success. you are doing. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, ma'am. Deanna Singh, she's an author and entrepreneurial businesswoman. You can, again, go to her website at DeannaSingh.com. And that is going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, thank you for watching. And I hope you join us again next week as we take another look at Our Issues Milwaukee. Have a great day.